Hi, this is David Bonacciotto. Welcome to video 3A, which is the first of four videos devoted to the 2012 FRM topic of markets and products. Of course, that's a part one topic, and that means we have assignments in John Hull's textbook, Options, Futures, and Other Derivatives. Technically, the eighth edition is assigned. However, these chapters, for part one especially, have not changed much in the last two editions. So if you happen to have the sixth or seventh edition, you're still good to go for John Hull. At the same time, the John Hull textbook is probably the most important textbook of any of the textbooks that are assigned in part one. It covers much of the testable material. Of course, there are other sources, but this is a textbook we can't ignore. And so let's look at chapters one, two, and three, the introduction, mechanic of futures market, and hedging strategies using futures. So basically, we're looking at futures contracts. And then lear learning spreadsheets associated with this are 3A1 arbitrage, where we illustrate the arbitrage idea. Why does that matter? Well, because a lot of our derivative pricing is really based on a no arbitrage idea. 3A2 illustrates the daily margin concept, low, te low in terms of exam relevance, um, for your reference. And then finally, 3A3, quite, quite the opposite, high, uh, sh a spreadsheet illustrating the minimum variance hedge, and we'll explore that shortly. So if we look at chapter one, we're asked to differentiate between an open outcry system and electronic, tra electronic trading. And of course, in general, there's a shift or trend away from open outcry and toward electronic trading. In open outcry, traders physically need an exchange for shouting and using hand signals. In electronic trading, there's electronic matching of trades. Now, one of our big distinctions here in the John Hall introduction is over-the-counter as opposed to exchange traded. So over-the-counter refers to a network of dealers linked by phone or computers, and there's a trade between two counterparties. So the advantage, and in many cases the necessity for over-the-counter, is that the two counterparties can customize their terms or features or specifications of the contract. So the big advantage to over-the-counter is that we can have non-standard terms and the participants can negotiate these terms between them. The disadvantage is that lacking a central exchange or central counterparty, there's counterparty each, um, each counterparty has counterparty risk to the other. So that's the big trade-off. The instruments that are introduced here are options, forwards, and futures. So an option is going to be either a call or a put option, which is going to be an option to buy or sell a certain asset by a certain date for a certain price. So we tend to say that an option is the right, but not the obligation to purchase or sell the asset by a date for a certain price. And a forward contract is an agreement to buy or sell the asset at the future time for a certain price. So here in the forward, we've just made a promise to buy or sell. And then the futures contract is similar to the forward. It's also an agreement or promise to buy or sell an asset at a certain price at a certain time. However, it trades on an exchange. You see, that's the difference between these two. So futures and forwards give the holder an obligation to buy or sell, but an option gives the holder the right to buy or sell. And so then one of the things that John Hall does is look at these uh, payoff diagrams. And so, for example, in the case of a long call option here, where the strike price is 20, what we have here is a profit chart where profit is the payoff minus the initial cost. So these charts can either be profit charts or payoff charts. And you see the only difference is, do we, do we consider the initial cost? Sometimes we just want to look at the future profile. Although you can see this, this long call strike at $20, probably more natural. We're interested in the profit. So in this case, you can see this horizontal line means that if, if we imagine ourselves as the buyer, so we're taking a long, we're purchasing the call. This negative $2 is the premium we're paying or the initial cost. And so it's a call option. That means on the x-axis we have